Greetings comic lovers and welcome back to Casually Comics, the channel where we chat all things comics, from views of comics new and old, to history, to anecdotes, really wherever our whims take us. Future State! Did you think it had defeated me? It nearly did. Future State is also quickly becoming present state, and not just because I've fallen behind. More and more it's being revealed what's gonna be sticking around. Well, for a while anyway, at the time of this recording. That Yara Floor Wonder Girl CW show already didn't make it. Trust nothing or no one until it's in your hands. The comic is still coming though. Comic vs. CW show? Mileage will vary. So while I work on a massive Future State roundup that may or may not see the light of day, let's finish off with Future State Catwoman. Finish that off, there's more. There's more! The Catwoman train heist. Also, a bunch of you caught on to a reference slash joke that I missed. With the cat knees and the fact that Selena has a little symbol she uses to rally her people. Cat knees. Like Katniss, Katniss Everdeen. Hello, Hunger Games reference. Why? Huh? Okay, let's steal a train. But before we get started, I'm Sasha, and if you're enjoying this content, you know what to do. Hit that like button, hit the subscribe button. Join us on this comic book journey. A quick recap for those who missed part one. But if you want the full experience, card and link. Selena Kyle, Catwoman, and her cat-shaped knee pads broke onto a train to save citizens being taken to a re-education camp under orders of a magistrate. While there, it was revealed that she wasn't the only one sneaking aboard this train. Talia Al Ghul was also there in disguise to rescue an alive Bruce. Wayne, though people think he's dead. Catwoman found an unlikely ally in Onomatopoeia and is fighting her way up the train as they plan to steal the whole thing. Part 2, the finale, let's go. The cover. I get what it's going for, this Blade Runner-esque color scheme and the vague spy thriller posing, but it's very meh. Neither of the Catwoman Future State covers have done the story justice. I like that Onomatopoeia made the cover though, good for him. Catwoman's crew are getting in position outside the train as they near the upcoming tunnel, and as any good train heist aficionado knows, that's where you cut the power. Her henches slash partners are cat themed by the way. You have the chest your cat and Leo. Because even in the dystopian future, you need to maintain your theme. Themes are what separate us from the animals. Selena is having a tough time though. She's been fighting her way up the cars and is wearing her down. In fact, as we open, she's passing out. I do appreciate that they're taking the time to show that this is difficult. It makes it feel that there are some stakes here, even though we only have two issues to do everything. We see her insiders on the train, Billy and Skidmark, saying that they know she'll make it. I just had to remind everyone that there is a character in this called Skidmark. It's probably supposed to be with cars, velocity, Vroom vroom, lines on the pavement. And not, you know, the other thing, which is what I'm thinking about. What follows is a really well executed dream sequence, or passed out unconscious sequence. It both establishes Selena's headspace and her relationship to Bruce, and on a meta level works to establish Batman as a myth while still respecting the ties and roots to Bruce Wayne. Which is not something that all the future state books which have tried to attempt that have managed to do. Not all of them have tried to attempt that, but the ones that have, some of them have hit, some of them haven't. This is a truly well put together page. Selena weeps at Bruce's casket, which is emblazoned with the symbol of a bat, crying about how she is no hero, but as she sobs, an apparition speaks. Bruce Wayne is dead, and I'm all that's left. This also features Selina's version of why Batman does what he does. It's important to remember that this is in Selina's head, so everything that this Batman says is her own rationale to herself. In her mind, she believes that Bruce was Batman to try to escape himself. You need to know that down here in the dark, Bruce Wayne may be dead, but Batman, Batman lives. There's a transition of her being slapped by the Batman avatar as it says slap, so you realize it's onomatopoeia trying to wake her up. Slap. He points out that they're pumping the train full of sedative, and by that I mean he goes sss and points the gas using into the car. They're also sealing off the cars. Hey, a realistic response? That is both logical and something the heroes must overcome? You're too kind to us, Romvi. However, Selena has help on this train even if she doesn't realize it. In the control center, Talia and Bruce attack. Talia's here to bring Bruce to the resistance, but he says no matter how dire the circumstances, no killing. This guard he's taking out is my favorite. Whoa! Whoa, Batman, far out man. Fine, naive as ever, Bruce Wayne. Why'd you say his full name like that? You words you got the wrong Bruce? Oh, this is Bruce Banner, wrong train and universe. Get back in the cell. Bruce remarks that he thought there'd be more guards, and she tells him that there would have been, but there's some kind of disturbance further back on the train, which prompts him to check the cameras, and then he sees her, Selena. Onomatopoeia sure is being helpful, this comic. I just like getting to say his name over and over and over on a metapia. Selena gets Leo to overload her special magnetic train heist suit so they can overload the doors to the car. And the fight is back on. You'd still be groggy as heck after being pumped full of sedatives. They don't just magically wear off. But you've built up so much goodwill, future state Catwoman. Fight on. Still the guards are too many, and Selena is captured and yelled at by the captain. Remember, not on his train. Was it worth it? Well, any last words? Yeah. 
Batman lives. This panel, bringing the Samurai Jack realness, blam. So all our heroes stand together, also with onomatopoeia, and Bruce and Selina have that classic reunion, complete with her slapping him across the face before kissing him, like it's some kind of old western. Let's retire that trope. Let's stay in the past, not in future state. Should we retire the slap to wake up to? Both? Neither? Don't care? Drain highs? You're hurt. Yeah, well. You're dead. Talia doesn't have much of a reaction to this, but her body language indicates annoyance. That or she's looking out the window and genuinely gives zero, doesn't care. The captain, however, has alerted the peacekeepers, so there's no time for love or reunions, but there is time for Bruce to call Selena Cat because that is sticking around. They're little cutesy pie nicknames for each other, Bat and Cat, and I guess I'm just gonna have to live with it. Not my fave, personal preference, mileage varies. The two must part, and now the plan is they're gonna uncouple the train. Selena was gonna steal the whole thing at first. Her people had found some old tunnels under Gotham there we're gonna divert the train there. But now they'll take the back half with all the people on it and divert it over there. And Bruce and Talia will take the front two cars and keep going for the resistance, then blow it up. When this is done, Bat, how will I find you? Just steal something important, Cat. Oh, and then he waves goodbye to her. Why am I such a sap this week? Everything romantic. I'm like, whoa. This is a good take on their relationship. Caring deeply for each other, but also both bound to the things they need to do and able to function without one another. Selena being inspired by Bruce post his death was sweet and made it feel like their time together had made an impact on her. It was dark, yes, but she still found a way to work within her own wheelhouse, rescuing strays and the like, still using her own name, but inspired by his legacy. Not like she was subjugating herself for him, just waiting for him to die so she could drive across the country and then kill the Joker by slitting his throat with her fingernails. Sorry, wrong universe. Oh, don't think I forgot about Batman slash Catwoman. I saw there was a bat corset. You couldn't keep me away. So we have a denouement. Selena celebrating with her strays, onomatopoeia slinking off into the tunnels, and Talia and Bruce escape, but they leave the captain handcuffed to the remnants of the train, with the graffiti Batman lives beside him, and a bat symbol on fire in the snow, which makes little sense but looks cool. The end. This was a fun one, and concise. It set up what it wanted, and accomplished it. There were things that could have been more fleshed out, or reactions that would have been nice to see, like Talia caring at all about the Bruce Lena dynamic, but for the time given and what was presented, it still managed to get those emotional moments in there. The threads that were laid out in the first issue were followed through in the second issue. It wasn't trying to introduce new ideas or concepts in the second issue. It knew how much time it had and it worked with it. Its internal logic held true, so it was more forgiving of some of the flaws that were there. Like what was up with the cameras on the train? It was convenient how people were sometimes easy to locate, sometimes not. Why was on a Matapia there being transported? Maybe that'll matter later. As Future State is going to linger on past its initial two-month rollout. In certain parts, that is, thanks to the whole Omniverse model. The Gotham Magistrate stuff is sticking around. So some books will be rendered better or worse based on the lingering future state content in the well, future. So that's why we need to look at all this now as an encapsulated bubble before all of that happens, which can then change how this is viewed. Then it really will be retro state. The Batman future state stuff is starting to come together into a decent independent universe style thing. Or maybe it's the main verse. We'll see. Time of this recording. Hold me to nothing. This one for me was fun and felt complete. It had kind of a classic Elseworlds style vibe. And I dug that. But it won't be for everyone. Some may find it too simple or a rehash of many things they've seen before or just a meh. I want to hear your thoughts down below. What did you think of Future State Catwoman? Cat knees for life. Leave the comments down there and please do all the other YouTube things like, share, subscribe, hit the bell so that you never miss a vid. And thanks so much for taking some time every day to spend it discussing comics with me. I always appreciate it and I will see you again soon. Bye-bye.